with Gaia and the satellite and, and the CCDs that we're using, we're going down to the 0.1% accuracy level on CCDs. And that is not usual. People usually stop at 1% at level accuracy on CCDs. When you go down to the 0.1% level accuracy on CCDs, you start to see all kinds of little problems and big problems, um, which we have been able to, to deal with uh, quite accurately. So once you can get down to the 0.1% accuracy on your CCDs and you have a 35 meter focal length, you can get very high accuracy transit times and you can get from that very high accuracy positions. Now, the accuracies that you're talking about are particularly uh, stunning for the what we call the parallax measurements. So the parallax measurement is uh, comparing the difference in direction of a star as seen from different positions of the Earth's orbit uh, around the Sun. And it creates a little ellipse or a circle depending on, on how high or how low the star is. So those parallax measurements are the crucial input to our knowledge of stellar distances. And, but stellar distances are very large. So the parallaxes are very small and the largest ones are less than an arc second. What Gaia is possible, able to do is to measure those parallaxes down to a level of, of something like a few, a few hundreds of an arc second, of milli arc seconds. And to put that in, 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 in perspective, it is like uh, you're trying to measure the distance from Cambridge to London on a baseline of the width of a hair. Gaia is optimized for the astrometric measurement, so our cadence is, uh, is the frequency is much, much lower. And in principle, it would be like, okay, it's uh, totally impossible to, to detect uh, this kind of periodic uh, movements. However, if you keep on scanning the sky long enough and uh, your, your calibration is, uh, is really at the very high precision level, then suddenly it opens up this kind of uh, topic, which uh, was not really anticipated uh, uh, before for Gaia. So we are, uh, what we are detecting is, uh, is uh, in, in stars, very tiny little uh, oscillations, uh, which uh, is sort of a very interesting uh, insight into the interiors of stars and, uh, and understanding uh, better the inner structure which then can be compared with theoretical models. So it was a sort of very important step in, in understanding of uh, uh, stellar physics. What we are observing is, uh, uh, is a, a change in the brightness. And, and then because this brightness change is, is very regular, we can deduce that it is this kind of oscillation changes in the, in, in the star itself, that indeed it is changing the shape. And this what is now highlighted in, in the data release tree, it's at a very, very uh, low level uh, oscillations. We know stars, and they also include it in the data release, which oscillate really a lot. I mean, they, they really expand, the star becomes really significantly bigger and, and smaller when doing these um, oscillations. Uh, and from those ones, we really know that the size, size is changing. This one is in so small level that we can deduce it uh, only uh, because of the variation in brightness.